Let's talk about the sinusoidal response of first order linear systems. So if I have a linear system, um, and let's say I have a first order system like this, where I have a gain and a time constant, and I subject that system to a pure sinusoidal input with a frequency omega t, which is what I've drawn over here. Omega has the effect of uh, changing the frequency of that sinusoid, so a larger value for omega will make the frequency higher, and a lower value for the omega will make the frequency uh, lower. The output of this system we can calculate analytically as this expression over here. An important property of the kind of response that we are analyzing now is that this response has been uh, zero for times less than zero uh, for all times. And we can see that after some initial uh, lag, the output settles into what looks like almost a sinusoidal response um, of this form. And so basically we can see that these, this exponential term uh, will fade away as uh, the time becomes large. And then we do some uh, trigonometric magic and we end up with uh, this expression. Uh, an important uh, thing to notice is that the approximation is poor um, for small times, but quite good uh, as time becomes large. Now, uh, let's look at the effect of some of the parameters on this response. Um, we can see that the output here is actually of smaller amplitude than the input. Um, if you're following along in a textbook where uh, they analyze the system with an amplitude, just uh, remember that for linear systems, multiplying an input by a, a factor will always multiply the output by that same factor. Um, and so I've just uh, included one uh, factor here, which is uh, the gain of the first order system. And we can see as the gain of the first order system increases, the magnitude or the amplitude of the output increases. And here we can very clearly see the difference between the sinusoidal approximation and the actual uh, first order response. Now, another thing to uh, notice is that uh, as the frequency increases, the uh, amplitude of the output uh, decreases. So we can see at low frequencies here, the output is actually uh, larger than the input, but as the frequency increases, the output becomes uh, smaller. And this is a general property for most real systems, that um, if the input moves uh, very quickly, the system really can't keep up, and we end up with a uh, system that doesn't actually move. So if I make this frequency very, very high, we can see that um, the output almost doesn't move at all. Now, um, you can see this from the formula, but you can also see this when I move sliders, that uh, omega and tau are paired in, um, in groups over here. So we can see there's always a product, omega tau, omega tau, omega tau. And so we can see that actually um, we see much the same effect when we increase tau in the sense that the amplitude uh, becomes less than we saw uh, when we increased uh, omega. So the time constant gives us a sense of scale for how much this uh, frequency has an effect on that amplitude change. So uh, we can very clearly see that um, as the time constant gets larger, as the system in other words becomes slower, the uh, system has trouble keeping up with uh, the input. And we can also see that uh, with these large time constants, the time that it takes for that transient behavior to catch up with the sinusoid also gets, uh, gets longer. Right, so we start thinking about the properties of these sinusoids. And we can basically see that this approximating, uh, this approximating sinusoid 
um, is a pure sinusoid of the same frequency. This is an important uh, thing to notice is that these frequencies are exactly the same. Um, we can see that we have a formula for the magnitude of the output and we have a formula here for the uh, this angle, which is called the phase angle, uh, which really determines the difference between uh, or the, the, the amount that these two sinusoids are shifted. And in fact, uh, we can show that the um, time between peaks is uh, equal to minus phi over omega. So, so if, it, if you want to think about um, how far away these things are, these curves are um, on this time related graph, uh, effectively you want, to, you want to talk about that difference in time being uh, minus phi over omega. And so phi is known as the phase angle, or in many cases you'll hear uh, people talking about the phase lag, and you can see that effectively the output is assumed to uh, follow the input. In other words, if the peak in the input is observed here, we will see the um, peak in the, uh, in the output uh, this amount of time uh, after the peak in the input.